Now the first job on preparing this watercolour is we're going to use quite a lot of masking fluid. I'm going to use a lot of masking fluid for all of these white areas here, the sharp white areas, little bits like that, the rigging on the boat, around the edge of the boat, some of the reflections here and the sails of the windmill and the blocks of the windmill there. And they're going to take different tools to do them. We've got our applicator now, which we've seen used with a fine needle for the rigging. We've got brushes, and I've got this, this tool as well, the mapping tool, which is supposed to allow me to do broader lines. We're going to try that out as well. Um, and then we let that masking fluid dry, and we'll be able to start the actual painting itself. The white clouds and so on will just be done by wet into wet or wet next to wet. So first I've got to apply the masking fluid. And I'm also going to use a little trick. I'm going to use this um, mount that I've cut as my ruler so that I can mask within the straight lines within it as a ruler. You'll see how in a moment. I'm going to go in a little bit more depth uh, into these materials that we're going to be using. I've got a little piece of paper here that I'm going to just show you about the masking fluid and some of the watercolour techniques we're going to do. Um, we're going to be using then this uh, blue masking fluid from the SAA with the uh, fine nib on it, which is rather fun, uh, and gives me these very fine lines that we're going to demonstrate in the use of the um, rigging on the yacht. I'd like to do a little demonstration now in more depth about the brushes, the watercolour and how the techniques we are, and the techniques we're going to use. The masking fluid we're going to use, and this rather nice little tool here with the fine line marker on it. The, ordinary masking fluid and a little set that comes from the SAA as well with this mapping pen which is great for doing um, heavier lines and larger areas and this is say the different brushes and the uses we can get of those brushes doing textures of watercolours so let me just show you now um, a little demonstration uh, doing a swan here and a window and the use of the um, and the use of this uh, mount that I'm using for measuring, which is a, a very good little idea. It's not an invention, the mount, but the, actually the use of it, I think I haven't seen being used before by other artists. Again, expediency, I've needed to find a way of doing lines and marks. And this way of uh, using the mount is very, very useful, I think, and I'll show you why. We'll use these brushes shortly after doing the masking fluid demonstration. We've got a rake brush here with much broader uh, tines, as you can see and also a finer rake there from the SAA, my oval mop, and a stippling brush for doing textures, and then an ordinary round here. And we'll show the difference between those and how we're going to use those in this actual painting. And here I've got the SAA masking fluid brushes and the pen itself. And of course we've got these for later as well, where we're going to show you the use of the blue masking fluid. All right, first of all, let me show you what I mean about this applicator, which is rather lovely. You can always top it up with other bottles of the masking fluid, so we don't have to throw the whole thing away when it's uh, empty. But if we take off the top, you'll notice that inside there is a fine nozzle and a wire inside here that goes down inside that nozzle to keep it clean. And the beauty of this is that we can use that nozzle to draw whatever lines and marks we want. Now taking a, a, a mount like this is very useful as well because I can draw inside that mount right angles or longer lines. I can draw outside the mount for my lines and make quite thin lines. If I'm going on and pressing a bit harder but if I use it at more of an angle then I don't have to get this drip at the end. Then I'm not having to have a ruler flat against the paper. I can lift it just slightly and my hand is always holding it up. To catch the light in there I could do it obviously with the end of the tool as well and do a fine line around the outside like this just round the head, the back of the neck shining slightly, not too much on here. And we'll start to have some reflections, some fine ones as well as heavier ones coming round. So I can use this, you can see, finely like this. This is just to show you how this can, this is not watercolour paper, it's ordinary mounting card, how this can work. I'll put that needle back into it now. I'll take the ordinary masking fluid bottle of it and just take my mapping pen out take my mapping pen and we'll just use that look take some of the fluid onto it I'll just do some of the larger areas of the of the swan here block it right in in fact in this case a moment it's light around the other bits so we'll just have a little bit of light coming in and these larger lumps of water coming round We've got the fine line pen and then we've got this one for doing larger areas as well. Just to show you the technique, 
I'll let this dry, then I'll put a little bit of wash on to show you how I'm going to um, do the other, the main painting later on, just to show you how to put the glazes and the washes on. Let that dry off now then. And now while we're on the drier masking fluid, you see it's gone slightly darker, it's now dry. I'm going to take a, a little square brush. We don't want to paint squares with a round brush, do we? So if I take this brush and just take some blue to reflect and do little squares within that window. I can leave behind the lighter coloured panes by doing it that way. That's one way of doing it. And of course I can go around the outside of the, of the wall then in the same sort of way. Just to give you an idea, this is a flat brush. So there's our window. Or I could go over the whole thing, let that dry off. And while we're on it I'll just take a bit of uh, ultramarine. We'll just go over these lines to show you how that will work. A Prussian and ultramarine. So we've got over the masking fluid there. Let that dry off now. A bit stronger. Just so it shows that white out for you later. So this is the masking fluid. You can already see it resisting there. But uh, we'll rub it off especially and then show you even more. Now while I'm waiting on that, let me just show you what these different brushes will do. If we take this stippling brush, this one, it's rather nice. And I take some dark colour. And you can see that we'll get a nice stipple effect with that. So I shall use that on the trees in the uh, painting that we're going to do in Norfolk. If I take my large rake brush and take some dark colour, you can see how we can get a nice effect of, of rushes and reeds that way, or grasses. And if I take a finer one still, that's, I can get an even finer series of grassy or mossy lines. My round brush, of course, uh, we're getting a leaf shaped mark, so making flowers or doing trees or doing fine pointy lines in the same way. Now then on that window where we have the um, where we have the masking fluid, just gonna take a little bit of this turquoise and just go, it's dry now, straight over the whole thing to give myself a glaze over it. That's taken all the white down. Let that dry off and then we'll take the masking fluid off and I'll show you what happens. Right, let's look what happens when we rub this masking fluid away then, look. Away it comes and we've got these lovely white areas. So, for instance, if I take this window now, I could go back on that window with my little flat brush and I'll make a little dark colour again. And what I'll do is just show how we can make this window come down to those sides with a square brush, look. And if I want to, I can use the edge of the brush just to give some straight lines. The darks at the sides. And we can get the effect of the window very quickly that way. Let's have the cell, shall we? A little cylinder here. Perhaps some darker edges along there and around the top. And how easy to make a window. And even start putting some reflections in just by dragging a few pieces through. Give the feeling of reflections in the window. So. We know the different brushes we can use and the different ways we could use that. We could use sponges as well to make textures. And I can just tidy it up. This time I'm going to use a round brush, as you can see, so that I can just do last details. And I could use a flat, but it just shows you the way we can use these different brushes to bring things out and enhance a picture. And there we are. We can tighten the tap window as tighten the window as we want, but we get the feeling of the window. Now back down to the swan again. We've got soft edges here. Let's get rid of the um, white masking fluid now. We'll get the feeling of this reflections of the water. And what I'm going to do is take some of the same very dark we've just been making, and we'll just paint the dark of the swan in, leaving the reflections behind. Come around the front of the bird here. And I'm going to leave a little bit of light around the back edge here. Now what I'm going to do is take a bit of nice warm blue, the cobalt blue, go all the way around here, up into there. A little bit of white just on top there. Taking the same light blue, we'll come in giving a wash around these lighter areas here. So we're not taking all the white out, we're leaving some of the yellows and whites in there to reflect. Rippling down here, in and around, just get the feeling of it. And then we can start putting in some of these darker 
ellipses. There we are. Swan reflected in the water. Now if we want to, we can darken that swan down even more. We can take that down with this and make it even more shadowed look. A little bit of texture in to get the feeling of the feathers. But it's just to give you an idea. Now the masking fluid can be used, wash is built up, and then we can take the masking down. So we're going to use these techniques in this painting we're doing. Right, now I'm going to just show you a part of the finished painting that we've started, the yacht with the windmill. I'm just going to show you some of the rigging at the end of the painting to show you how that masking fluid worked. Okay, I've just removed the masking fluid from this picture, and now we can see how that works, both in the fine lines on the windmill and down the rigging here. So this is what those fine lines of masking fluid will do using that method I showed you of the um, mount to uh, make these fine lines. Okay, let's start off with the uh, fine lines which are going to be coming down the rigging here. I'll have my picture nearby so that I know where they go. I've already marked them out lightly and we'll get the applicator going. That should come out and keep that, that needle should have cleared this tube then. That should be ready to put on fine lines of fluid. Let's see if it's working. Yes, there we go. That's just nice. So what I've got to do now is try and get these very fine lines of fluid running down the mast here, like this. I don't want to do too much of an illustrative picture, um, but what I do do, I want to do as correctly as possible by having rough against smooth, light against dark, warm against cool and so on. Then curves inwards and I just bring that around like that, you see. There's another one here that does the same. Bring it down from there. You always put two lines on if you want to make it a little bit heavier. Like that, you see. Reasonable drawing skills. Need some tides for the awning cover here. Some of these reeds here, we could do some highlights on those. They come up through here. Get a bit of texture on those reeds that are lighter here for later. So that's most of our highlights. Now I want to come down here and just look at some of these reflections that are coming into the water, which are a little bit lighter. And here where the mast is too coming through there. I'm talking of the mast, we want a little bit of light down the centre of the mast as well. Perhaps even down the side of the mast too. So that's with our applicator doing the uh, finer work. Now that we've done the finer work, we'll just close this up. Okay, I want to try out this um, other applicator here, the mapping pen, and we'll just see if that will do these larger areas of white. Let's see, look at that look. It can do these nice big chunky areas of white that I've got left behind. Now, this pen is also going to be very useful for carrying on with these ripples down here that were a little bit wider. now start to get these in. We can take these down later, they'll be, they'll be very light at first, but we can bring them down to be uh, darker by just tinting them over later on. At the moment it's just to get some highlights. There we go. Now to nowhere else that needs white. The larger areas aren't so bad because we can actually leave those behind anyway. So using the mapping pen we're able to put in these larger bits of white that they were required and I think that that's about all I'm going to need on those so there's a larger one here I'll put a bit more up there so I haven't had to use the brushes in many ways I prefer not to because it is a mess on the brushes I know these brushes are specially made to get rid of the stuff. Um, not easy. Right, that should be my highlights all in the two areas that just need a bit more light here and there. That's it. 
So we'll let that dry and we're ready to start our painting. Right, here's the setup I've got ready. My stretch paper ready to go. We've got the masking fluid on, palette of watercolours, water. I think probably about four brushes at the moment, unless I need more later. A small round, my oval mop, a, a, a quite hefty rake and a fine rake for the reeds. Um, and I will be doing all my work with that on this particular painting. We'll see, you know, won't we? Right then, with this painting, we want to do a more traditional method. I'm going to start on the sky, put in um, wet next to wet, wet into wet. What I'm going to do is put some water on straight away, just around where I want um, areas for the clouds to be quite soft later. I want harder edges around parts of the clouds. And some I want to just blend in and be soft, so I'm just going to put some water around some of these lighter coloured clouds at first, just to let the uh, edges be a little softer on those. Right, I want to start fairly low down and work my way up. I could actually work this upside down. I could have um, turned the whole painting upside down here. I want to be fairly strong at first. My colour. And right through here. Coming down into those clouds that are here. Just feeding my way through. We know that this colour is going to go lighter later again. Right through down here the same. Right up to the windmill. Underneath and through the clouds. And then coming down, I want to come to my cobalt violet. And I've got a slightly warmer colour at the bottom here. Right through again. I'm going to come up and just link into those blues. Give a little bit of light there. Just down to here. Then back to my turquoise again, which I've been using. I'm using a light turquoise here just to start off with. While it's still wet, work my way up. Got a little bit stronger colour. Come through to my cerulean blue up here, round the windmill. So I've gone from turquoise to my cerulean. Let that just link in. And I'm going to take some of that warmer cerulean just down into the cobalt violet down here. Just to give the feeling of some slightly darker clouds happening in the background. Notice I'm painting on an angle here as well. here through all blue through here now. As I get higher I'm going to make the colour slightly stronger. So I'm going to work up the paint a little bit more, get a bit stronger up into here around this cloud. I'm going to come and put some water around that in a minute just to soften it off a bit because I want a quite hard edge around this particular cloud here. Quite dark. Comes down into that cerulean. Got a hard edge there I don't want. So I've got to soften that and blend that in. Put a little bit more of this turquoise in up here so we get a much lovely deeper blue. I'm working on the vertical for you so that you can see what's happening here a bit. I don't want it trickling too much. Really lovely strong colours. And then I'm going to come up to my um, cobalt blue up here. I shan't need to go into the ultramarine on this. A nice strong cobalt blue up there. This paper's fairly absorbent as well, I can see. 
just loop that in before it gets too dry. There's a light area of cloud we'll lift it out there, look. And uh, bring some of that turquoise, that cerulean turquoise, just back into here a bit. sunny day. That's what I was doing for you here was I wanted to show you how we could do all these different ways of painting skies and clouds. I'm going to put some warmer colour into this later. I just want to soften these edges of cloud a bit now and let them with some water let them blend in. Right now let's take some stronger blue again, some of that cobalt and a bit of cerulean and really drop in a bit more around the, the cloud here so that I can get a nice strong blue coming in around there up here a bit of a stronger sky a really cheerful sky Really pushing the colour a bit up here. Really into it. Right now, I want to look at my greys. So, as we did before with the greys, we'll uh, just clean that up a bit. That um, palette. There we go. Let's clean it out. Got a nice clean area there for my greys. Going to take some um, cobalt and a little touch of. Sienna to give me a, a nice warm grey and we'll just like to put that in now to those clouds and we'll soften that in with water in just a moment again I want wet into wet effects and gently down through here that comes down through that bit of sky there off Underneath here, down through there, right through now. Some water, and we'll let that blend in a bit. Don't want hard edges on these clouds here, they're very soft. Just nice, delicate, soft, wet into wet, or wet next to wet effects for that cloud, which comes down works its way down to the greys here so wet into wet and wet next to wet gives me a soft edge remember and the uh, wet on dry will give me a harder edge which we may use a bit more later all sorts of different ways of painting skies this paper being very absorbent doesn't allow me to lift out very easily, so I've, I've got to paint in this way really on this particular type of paper. It's a Waterford 140 pound uh, knot here, which is fairly old, and because of that, I suspect that's why it's not behaving itself very well. It's tending to uh, act a bit like blotting paper. And I might want a slightly stronger blue here and there, so I'm going to just mix up a, a bit more of that blue just to give me a slightly stronger colour to the. And so we bring this blue down into here, right through, you get the feeling of a nice bright blue sky. Right, we can let that dry off a bit now. We've come right round the windmill, so that's now standing out quite nicely. A bit of blue into some of that there, and here and there. Right, now I'm going to work my way down and to put the first coat onto the windmill. Take some uh, raw sienna, just give that a, a thin coat. 
top of there as well. Come right down through. Because we've already got the, the white of the um, masking fluid in that. While I've got that on my brush, I'll drop it into there as well. When you've got a colour on your brush and you know it's somewhere else, put it on there. Right through there. The master will do it more carefully in a moment. Now I've got to just blend that out. That comes through into there a little bit, down to here it as well. And I want to use some of the purple from earlier. And just come around into it here. On that side. It up there, taking some ultramarine, drop a bit of that in, just letting the, the gravity do the work after that. And we can start to just paint in some of these little bits of dark on the, on the windmill. Be dry enough now to almost start that. I'm just hinting at it at the minute. Just lift a bit of that out there. Just a little bit lighter just around that edge. Coming down there. I've got a glaze over that later. That was just to give me a basic coat. While I'm doing that, let's take this lovely blue, turquoise blue, onto the hull of the boat here as, as a glaze. And then we'll drop into that a little of the cobalt violet. You look for these colours. And down to our yellow ochre, finally. Too much. Too strong. Take it back a bit. There we go. A little bit of the purple and blue. I'll just darken softly in to get the feeling of the boat curling around. Reflections. I've got to go much darker under there shortly. So about Sienna, a little bit of Indian red earlier on. Just get in there with the warmer, warmer reds. Even a little bit of <coughs> even a little bit of rose in a minute, I think. And that's dry enough, I'll go back into that and paint the warm into that too. In the meantime, we'll just indicate in. Right, now I want to use one of my small round brushes. As I feel it's time to paint in the um, mast. So I'm going to go to a raw sienna, a little touch of Indian red, and try and come fairly straight down this mast. On the centre here. A bit more warmth under that house as well. And back up into here, where I want to put in a bit more shadow. I'm going to take some ultramarine. a little touch of the bird sienna and just go across this shadow a bit more deeply to really bring this out now. I didn't go darker yet in a moment but first of all let's just get in these very dark so ultramarine, a bit of bird sienna, a nice dark 
shadow up through here and underneath some of these areas now start to feel in amongst these and as you see I'm going to go even darker in there, take some Prussian and the same bit of burnt sienna and really get a bit darker into the background here one or two little bits of there we go while I'm at that I've got to come down the inside of this sail Same here, a little bit of light dark down that one, very finely painted, using my little finger just to find my way down. There we go. With a small brush I'll now come across these bits of the sail like this. Hopefully this will mean that the um, light of the sky will start to show better as well. And that's the windmill done for the moment. When we rub off the, the light areas, it'll make more sense. Now under the yacht, a little more of the burnt sienna, and we'll just go underneath these cross trees here. And little bits of darker colour here and there down the mast on that edge. Actually down this side. Right, while we're working with those darker colours, warms, let's just come into here and really start to try and get the dark that's inside the warms inside here the feeling of this happening in here it's got a purple now in there Feel this line along the sort of the boat, the gunnels. And while we're on that darker purple and blue, I still want to be a little bit darker back here. Okay, and my next uh, coats. I need to wait till I finish now. My greens. Now for my greens into here, um, I want to keep them fairly cool. What I'm going to do is take some Oriole in yellow, just drop that in across here first of all. So I want a fairly warm, light, sunny grass there. And that comes right through here to there, right through there. I'm going to drop that down from here as well. And let's have a bit of it coming sunlit around the top here. Through here. And we can paint wet into wet into that. So just thinning it down to the edges. Take some Sienna, make it a bit warmer. Especially up here. And 
and then I want it to become warmer still up there. I'll add in a hint of the burnt sienna there. Coming down from under here as well. Now I want to start getting the, the tree. So I'm going to take some viridian, which is quite a green green. We'll just drop that along here. I'm working on the verticals, so we're going to have to be careful. Although I want wet into wet, I don't want to lose my colours completely. through there, just starting to tickle in the viridian back here to give a feeling of these grasses and reeds. I'm going to turn go into a little bit more to sap green which is a bit warmer and start to let that tickle in to get the feeling of these reeds back here. Coming right down through into the water green again, bring that warmth up into the tree here. It's lovely summer effects of light. tip of the brush using my oval mop here. As it gradually dries I can gradually tighten up to a darker into here now so I'm going to take my cobalt blue, my, sorry, my ultramarine blue and go down to that lovely warm again where I add the blue and the brown together. In fact I'm going to drop some Crushing into it as well to really get these nice dark warms in the bushes now. Edge of the brush, getting that furry effect for the leaves. Look, not too much. It's just judging how much to put on before you completely lose your tree. Same all the way along here, just feeling these grasses and reeds that are coming up. I won't go darker in there yet.
water and soften that back in. So we go darker still. Prussian, a little touch of the purple. And a bit of the sienna again. Need to get some stronger colour in there now. You see how the special effects can give us the, um, the feeling we want. I'm going to use the fine rake brushes later to put some of the reeds in. Right, while we're on this colour again, let's take some of that blue, blue-grey, and paint the whole of this planking along the side here, the edge of the right down and through down to here and a little bit of this dark going on underneath the boat as well now we've got to try and find that as well now put a glaze under here I want hard edges so let's get that in before it dries off on down to the water and just prepare it I'm going to leave it overnight but I, I want to get a wash onto here and for that wash you will see Oreo in yellow again and just do a very fine wash of the yellow all the way down through here just light to give a cream right through and I'm going to work into that with a bit of colour as well to give myself a base before painting in the other colours tomorrow. And then, take some of the turquoise that I love so much and just add that in very lightly down here as well to start to give my background lights. I did let these glow through the waves tomorrow. Well, if you could almost say we've got a painting now, haven't we? But there we go. That turquoise is coming through into here. Getting the tip of the mop to do this, just to get reflections. Blues coming through, right into wet underpainting. There we go. Now that needs to dry until tomorrow. And while that's drying, I'm just going to take a slight touch of the blue grey, and just drag it over here. Slightly dry brushed feeling of this canvas ready for tomorrow again like that not need much a little touch stronger into it this is just to drop in a bit more right let's get on with the main painting now here we are all my different brushes set up and ready let's look at this little bit here first of all I was just showing you how we can use this textural brush here to do stippling to make a uh, texture Let's just do some of that on there. We'll take some of the very deep blue, a little bit of green. Um, Prussian and some sap green. And let's see if we can just stipple a little bit onto here to get the feeling of those leaves. Now look at that. You see how that's going on? To get the feeling of the leaves coming right up and off the, the edge over the wet into wet we've already done. 
Don't forget to twist the um, brush slightly when you do this, otherwise it will look like patterns rather than leaves. And they're coming right up into the background here. Don't want to overdo it, we don't want it too much in, in focus. A little bit coming on into textures down here as well. And not only can I stipple, I can actually drag the brush slightly to give the feeling of brush strokes too. But that's that brush. Now I brush it off and I'm going to come to my finer um, rake, take the same colour and I want to just bring in these reeds down here, looks a bit more green, just into the tops of the reeds so I get very fine rushes and reeds and grasses going on down there. It makes it look like I've painted hundreds and hundreds of fine lines, but you and I both know I haven't. All I'm doing is using this rake brush to give that feel to the top a little bit as well. We've got grasses coming right up and through here. You see I'm crisscrossing it slightly. I'm not going absolutely straight. Those reeds come all the way down. A bit of blue into my green. A little bit of ultramarine, just to make it a bit stronger down in the foreground here. And we'll have some stippling going on, just a little bit of short strokes coming across the grasses here, like this look. I'm going to use its edge on, sideways on, just to come across. Now, I'm just going to go to my slightly larger one, and just do a few larger strokes here in the foreground. Get a few larger bits of grass and weeds here. There we go, that's giving us our texture. Here I could go back with a little bit of light because we've used a transparent yellow there which is called aureolin. What I'm going to do now is take um, some lemon yellow which is not transparent and I'm going to add that with a little bit of the green so it's quite light and I'm using it opaquely. And I'm just going to come across here and drop in with this lemon yellow a few bits of texture just to bring back a few lights of the leaves there by dappling it with the end of the brush this time not using it lengthways and that just gives me just a few lights back in. Right, time to go on down to the water. So I've shown you the brown brush, I've shown you the stippling brush, I've shown you the rakes. Now I'm going back to my mop. We want to start looking at the water here and I should be using my round brush as well. That'll make that boat stand out a bit more. Still using my larger brush. Come back to some ultramarine. Because we've got some lighter blues coming in here. Just kill it up. I'm starting to get that lovely feeling of the, the water. Still using my bigger brush. Aren't we? To go a little bit stronger, take a bit of purple, and add a wee bit of the green to the purple. Strangely enough, strange colour, but I think you'll see what I'm going to do in a moment. Just a few darks, a little touch of sap green. Not a colour you normally make. Right, down to my smaller brush because I now want to start painting in some of these dark shadows that are reflecting back here. We've got the water coming through there and then it gets darker as the... So I'm going to put uh, a bit more reflection going on down through here. So my big brush won't quite go down to the scale of smaller mark, which I want now. So we're just finishing up now with doing the final details here. And it's time now to take away the masking fluid. And you can see now these fine white lines coming out. Where the mask and blue it is, we've got to take it away. Right up to here. There we go. Right. Now I 
I've got to continue into this and start tinting some of these bits of white down. Here, for instance, these little bits of green, I'm going to put some um, iron and yellow across there just to make them a bit greener, a bit more yellow, because they don't want to be white, and just blend them across. And then later I should go across a little bit of dark into those as well. A bit of oil and yellow, a bit of green, just to darken them in. And these areas here, that wants to be a very light cadmium orange. To make the woodwork there. And it comes out at the top there. Here, on top it's a bit of cerulean blue for the sail there, and then some lovely cobalt coming up and through to make it even bluer. And down at the bottom we've got some very, very dark blue, so we'll take some of the Prussian and we'll make it dark around this lower edge. A little bit of purple into it as well. So we'll really get these dark shades down here. A bit of dark hanging around the shadow of that into here. And I've got to make a very deep colour around the um, bottom here of the gunnels. So carefully painting in all the way along there. And I've got to go in a bit as well. That gives us that lovely light. But I do want to get a slightly nicer curve on that, so let's just thicken that line out a bit and try and get a nicer curve to the shape I've got there. It should be a gentle sweep of that boat, that's better. Same under here, a little bit more. Gentle sweep under the boat, and then these darks coming out. Now the windmill up here has a bit of blue in between the sails, so let's get that in. Between those sails there. these sorts of details now. So dark across that bit. Now we've got the lights out, we can start to really play with the details. You can see the white sails now here. We've got some dark just coming down around that bit. Try brush it just slightly. So you see what fun we can have with the rigging there. I might want to soften it just slightly in a moment. This post hasn't been rubbed up yet, look, let's do that. There we go. I need a bit of um, orange into there as well. That's better. And here, that white lettering isn't white in fact, it's yellow, so in yellow. And just put that over it to make that a cream. There we are. simple that was. You can see how we can use a wash there now. This roof over here is a little bit greener. And that's our picture almost done. What do I want to do anyway? Now back to the reeds over here. I want these reeds to be a lot greener. So I'm going to put in... So I think what I need to do now is to take my mop and maybe these are a little bit too bright so I'm just going to use a bit of water to soften them back just a fraction just take them down a bit because I'm not rigging out showing out too much and finally to finish off we of course need to sign it what I do
And there we are, a little watercolour of Norfolk, painted fairly simply, showing you all the old traditional techniques. Now we can see the textures in more detail that I've done with the textural brushes. With those rakes and with the stipple brush we can see the masking fluid, how it's been used on the sails of the windmill and the rigging of the yacht and how we've used the wet into wet, how we use the wet into wet with the oval mop to get the feeling of the ripples in the water. Mm -hmm. 